In this example problem, we'll solve a limiting reagent problem using a limiting reagent table. The problem reads, in the reaction below, 65 grams of N2H4 gas and 87.4 grams of N2O4 gas react to completion. We want to calculate the mass of N2 gas that can be produced, the mass that remains of the excess reactant, and if 64.5 grams of N2 gas is produced when the experiment is performed, what is the percent yield? We know this is a limiting reagent problem because we're given amounts of two different reactants in our reaction. For a limiting reagent problem, we're going to calculate starting moles, the number of reactions that can be performed with each of our reactants, our change in moles, and the moles of each at the end. To calculate our starting moles, we can use dimensional analysis. We can convert 65 grams of N2H4 into moles of N2H4, and we have 2.03 moles of N2H4. We can also convert our 87.4 grams of N2O4 into moles of N2O4 using its molar mass, and we get 0 0.950 moles of N2O4. Next, we want to calculate how many reactions we can perform with each of these moles of reactants. We can also use dimensional analysis for this step. We have 2.03 moles of N2H4, and each reaction requires 2 moles of N2H4, so we can perform 1.01 reactions with N2H4. For N2O4, we do a similar calculation converting moles of N2O4 into reactions using the coefficient in the balanced chemical equation. For every one reaction, we need one mole of N2O4. So we can perform 0 0.950 reactions. The reactant that can perform the fewest reactions is our limiting reagent. In this problem, N2O4 is our limiting reagent because it can produce the smallest number of reactions it will run out first and thus limit how much product we can produce. To calculate our change in moles, we have to use the number of reactions that our limiting reagent can provide. So to calculate our change in moles for N2H4, we can perform 0 0.950 reactions, and in each reaction we lose 2 moles of N2H4, so we'll lose 1.90 moles of N2H4. All of our reactants will be used up, so our change in moles will be negative, and our products will be produced, so our change in moles will be positive. For N2O4, with the 0.95 reactions, we'll use up 1 mole of N2O4 for each reaction, so we'll lose 0.95 moles of N2O4. And for a product with 0.95 reactions, each reaction produces 3 moles of N2, so we'll produce 2.85 moles of N2. So we have a positive change for our product. Since our problem doesn't ask us about H2O gas, we don't need to calculate the change in moles. To calculate our ending moles, we take our starting moles row plus our change in moles row. For N2H4, we start with 2.03 moles, we lose 1.9 moles, and we have 0.13 moles remaining. For N2O4, we started with 0.95 moles, and we lost 0.95 moles, so we have 0 moles remaining of our limiting reagent. And for N2, we started with 0 moles, and we've produced 2.85 moles, so we have 2.85 moles of N2 when our reaction goes to completion. Now we can calculate the mass of N2 gas that's produced. We can convert our 2.85 moles of N2 gas into grams of N2 gas using its molar mass, and we'll get 79.8 grams of N2. This answers part A. To answer part B, 
we can use the ending moles of N2H4 gas. Since N2H4 gas is the excess reactant, we can convert the 0.13 moles into grams using its molar mass and we'll get 4.20 grams of N2H4 remaining. This answers Part B. To answer Part C, we're given an experimental value for how much product is produced. 64.5 grams of N2 gas is produced. And we've already calculated how much N2 gas should be able to be produced based on stoichiometry. The amount we're given in the problem that's actually produced when the experiment is performed is our actual yield. The amount we calculate using stoichiometry is our theoretical yield. So to calculate percent yield, we actually produced 64.5 grams of nitrogen gas, and theoretically we could have produced 79.8 grams of nitrogen gas, which is what we calculated for part A, times 100%, and we'll get 80.8%. So this answers part C.